aim that we are trying to work towards in Fiji is getting to know operating the islands and making connections so that if we come back during a HADAR event, so something to do with humanitarian aid disaster relief, we can come in on the Canterbury, on the ship, fly out and bring supplies to the people of the islands. You know, bulk food, bulk water movements, as well as moving, you know, big generators, two-ton generators on the sun load. Um, so part of it is us flying around and identifying um, places where we can land, uh, where we can take stuff and, and how we can get it in there. Um, but when you come into an environment like here or like we saw with uh, Tonga last year, Everything's a bit more difficult uh, in that tropical environment with the heat and humidity. All of your power margins are a little bit reduced and that just dictates how much fuel you can take during a flight and how many people you can take and the types of approaches and departures you can do. Morning, you know, 8.30, 9 o'clock and it's already 25, 30 degrees here so it's so hot, eh? Really hot. Yeah, it's tough out there. It's just a race to get the aircraft turned on so you can get the air conditioning on. Yeah. Um, so today we had a group of three helicopters that went up to the Yazero Islands. Um, we went to what were the four schools between us, the two 90s and 109 dropping off um, school box um, into the Yazeroes. We went to um, the Vita District School uh, where there were probably been about maybe two or three hundred kids. As soon as we got out, eh, there's like hundreds of them just came running from swamped us. Um, not a lot of English, but they uh, understood rugby ball. So <laughs> got the rugby ball out, slotted a few goals, passed the ball around. Uh, no, it was pretty awesome. Uh, to, to be honest, to do that as our last flight was, was pretty epic, uh, a great way to finish our, our trip here in Fiji.